Yeah. Yeah. I'll be honest with you, I'm, I'm uh, uh, not all the way through watching all of these guys, but there seems to be obviously a good list of guys, you know, guys that have had uh, successful college careers, uh, guys that have won a lot of games, played in different systems, so I'm enjoying watching these guys and, and I think we have a long way to go. You know, it's a long process. I say this every year. It's a process that uh, lasts a long time and there's different stages to the process. Obviously, you know, you have the senior bowl and then you know, the, the combine here. So it takes a while to, to really uh, gather all the information and make decisions. And, uh, but there seems to be a good list of, of guys here. You know, I don't know, John. I, I, you know, I'll tell you, he's a, first of all, he's a great kid, comes from a great family. Uh, we enjoyed uh, recruiting him. I, I've, I've known him since he was 17 years old, uh, when he was at Fork Union. So I've known him for a long time, know his parents, his brothers. Uh, he's a humble kid. Uh, he's talented, smart, you know, good guy to be around, and I enjoyed coaching him uh, that, that uh, his first year at Penn State. I think so, James. I mean, I know him. You know, I've been around him a long time, and some of these other guys I don't know. So naturally, you know, I know him a little bit better. It doesn't mean I evaluate him any differently. It just means that I just, you know, I've been around him a little bit more. You know, look, I think, John, again, I'm not up here to, to really talk about rounds. You know, I think it's more about, like, what is the type of player at any position uh, that fits your team? You know, what is your team looking for? Uh, at quarterback, at defensive end, at nose guard, at running back, whatever the position is, and then based on that, then you determine, along with Rick Smith, you know where where we're going to draft guys. I, I I don't get up here and uh, talk about rounds and things like that. I don't think that's what it's all about. I think it's more about what fits your team. You know, look again. I, I'm I'm. Uh, just starting in on these guys. I think that Christian's a very talented guy, but there's a lot of talented quarterbacks in this league. You know, uh, uh, to, to, to stand up here and answer whether a guy has starting ability, I mean, it is very, very difficult to start a quarterback in this league. I mean, it's a very difficult league to be a starting quarterback in. And so, you know, I think it's more about evaluating the talent, uh, looking at the skill set, thinking about what your team needs, what type of offense your team runs, who fits it the best, and you kind of go from there. Well, I think one of the things about uh, playing quarterback is you, you have to be a great teammate, and you have to be able to communicate with everybody on the team, with your coaching staff, with everybody in the building. Know, your general manager, your your uh, your scouts. You know, when you're a quarterback in in, in the NFL, uh, you know, obviously you're the face of the franchise in many ways, and so you, you have to be a, a really bright guy, a hard worker, a good teammate, a communicator, a guy that can talk to uh, teammates from all kinds of different backgrounds and try to bring guys together. And <laughs> most importantly, you have to go out on the practice field and, and earn the respect of of your, your teammates and then go out and win games, which ultimately earns respect to your teammates and your team. So I think there's a lot that goes into that position. That's why it takes a long time to evaluate it. Say that again, John. Christian. Christian can throw the football. Uh, he's got a strong arm. He's a big guy. Uh, he's smart. He was able to learn uh, quickly when, when we had him at Penn State. And, uh, you know, I'll be honest with you, I've, I've talked to a few other guys at that position, not to get into all the list of guys that I've spoken to, but that are smart, that have good arms, uh, that, that seem to be quick learners and things like that. So, again, it's a long process, and it's going to take a long time to figure out at every position what's the best fit for your team. Other than those things you just mentioned? Yeah, no, I think, again, I don't wanna, I'm not gonna get up here and give you a list of uh, 
Uh, there are so many different things that go into uh, really every position. If you, if you looked at our position descriptions that our scouting staff uh, and our coaching staff have put together, I mean, look, you, you could take any position, and I could stand up here all day and tell you the attributes of a corner, a defensive tackle, a quarterback. I mean, it's just it's a list that goes on forever and ever. And, and it's hard to find somebody that has all of those qualities. You're trying to find the guys that best fit most of those qualities. So, you know, look, when you're talking about quarterback, obviously I just mentioned a lot of the things that go into it. you got to be able to throw the ball accurately. You, you have to be a good decision maker. you got to be a great teammate. you got to be a hard worker. you got to be smart. So there's a lot that goes into playing that position, and I just mentioned a few right there. I always go by the mantra of whatever the owner says, we, we basically do what the owner tells us to do. So Mr. McNair, you know, look, he, he's a, a great owner. Uh, he wants a winner in Houston. Uh, he's expressed that to me in various ways, not just at that position, but uh, uh, in a lot of different ways, you know, how we can build this team, uh, both Rick and I, and, and uh, that's what we're trying to do. So to me, like whatever Mr. McNair says, that's we try to go by that. What's your evaluation Yeah, I think he, he's an interesting story to me. Um, he, you know, he came in to rookie minicamp right after the draft, after having really, you know, just basically trained for the for the combine and all the things that go into the draft process. And he was a little bit out of shape, uh, a little bit overweight. And you know, we, we mentioned it to him a few times, and uh, he really took it upon himself to to get in better condition, to lose weight, to learn our offense. And then by the end of the year, he was playing pretty well for us. And uh, we believe that he has a really good future for us. Yeah, I'm excited about that. You know, when I was in New England, we, we played in London, and I thought that was a great experience uh, for that team. And I think it'll be a similar experience uh, going to Mexico City, play Oakland, and playing a great team uh, with a great coaching staff led by Jack Del Rio and a tough team. So, you know, the, the, the whole deal there is about playing Oakland, not necessarily being in Mexico City to go for tours and things like that. So I think that's the big goal there is to go down there and try to win the game. But I think it's a great opportunity for our organization to be on Monday night football uh, you know, in Mexico City. I mean, I think, look, I, I think when you're when you're getting a quarterback, especially a young quarterback, which is, I think, what you're asking, you know, they, they, they come from um, different college systems, and, and when they come to the pros, it's just a totally different ballgame. You know, you're talking about defenses that uh, are very multiple, uh, do a lot of different things, personnel-oriented. Uh, you know, some of these guys, we talk to them initially, and they don't even know the difference between nickel and base defense. So, you, you know, you start from scratch. So I think you have to be careful about... Uh, you know, throwing the kitchen sink at these guys and then just throwing them to the wolves. I, I think when a guy goes out there and, and has a bad experience as a young quarterback uh, and doesn't win right away or fails, or it's not very good. So I think you have to be careful about what type of team you, you're building around them and be very thoughtful about that. And then uh, when, when you believe that the guy's ready to play, if that's what you're going to do, go with a young quarterback, then, uh, you, you know, you put the guy in there and... and and, and try to uh, control the game and help him help him uh, make good decisions and, and hopefully he comes along quickly. And so I think it's difficult. It's it's a, it's Arizona not an easy State process to play quarterback. Arizona State wide receiver DJ Foster, table one. Arizona State wide receiver DJ Foster, table one. Sure, Tom. Um, you know, look, I, I think the the one thing that that you know that I really like about Tom is a very hardworking guy, a smart guy, good communicator, good teammate. Uh, his work ethic is rec respected by the guys in our, our locker room. You know, we're going to give him reps this spring. Uh, I know he's out in Arizona right now working hard. Uh, I think he's out there with a couple of teammates. And, uh, he, you know, he came back in great shape last year. And I think the whole deal with those guys, like I was just saying to Eric, you know, it's just, you know, if they get the opportunity, they have to take advantage of the opportunity and, and uh, see what happens. But he's a hardworking kid, and we're glad he's on our team.
Yeah, it's, that's a great question. I think that's kind of what I was alluding to with Aaron is, you know, some of these guys, like, for instance, you watch a lot of quarterbacks, and it's not their – I always tell the rookies, like, this is not your fault. It's not your fault. But, like, you're always in the shotgun. You never take a snap from under center. And in the National Football League, you're going to have to take a snap from under center. So you're talking about teaching, you know, a, a 21, 20-year-old 20 guy, 22-year-old guy, just how to take a quarterback uh, snap from the center, quarterback center exchange. So, you know, like, that's like an elementary uh, skill in, in the NFL, but some of these guys have never done it. So if you just look at that as an example, uh, it does take a while. And you have to give the guy time, and you have to make sure that you bring him along at, at his own pace, he's got to put a lot of work into it. He's got to be willing to put a lot of extra work into it to get ready to play, and it takes a long time. Uh, I mean, you're talking about, you know, when you're in college, there's the 20 hour rule, which, believe me, when I was at Penn State, like, we had to follow, follow the rules to the letter of the law. So, like, you're talking about getting these guys at 2 30 in the afternoon. You maybe meet with them for 45 minutes. You're out on the practice field. Uh, then they, they're done with practice. They, they have to go eat, go to study hall. You don't get nearly as much time as you do in the NFL. So we, we ran uh, you know, the basics of kind of what we, we do in, in Houston, but not nearly uh, the amount of scheme that, that we ran the last couple of years in Houston, if that makes sense. You know, not really, Joe. Um, you know, if they, you know, maybe a, a text, uh, you know, after they won a game or something. Arizona like that. wide receiver Caleb Jones, like table three. Arizona wide receiver no, Caleb Jones, not, not table really. three. Well, everybody that was on the 2015 team, where everybody is being uh, evaluated, discussed. So as far as being in the plans, I'm sure everybody's in the plans. Do you ever envision a time where Michigan State quarterback Connor Cook, podium C. Michigan State quarterback Connor Cook, podium C. Do you ever anticipate a time where it evolves to uh, you guys have offenses that evolve towards the tenant season? It's a great question. I, I would say that you know when you when you look at these offenses, I do think there is a certain amount that you're going to have to adapt to your offense, depending on the type of player that you take. You know, I'll just give you an example. There's a lot of players in this draft that do a lot of different things. They play running back, they play quarterback, they play receiver, they return punts, they play corner, they run speed sweeps, they run reverses, they they throw halfback passes. They so I think I think when you look at college football, there's a lot of interesting trends in college football that that when these guys get to your your level and you don't have a ton of time to work with them, you know, you have the nine week off season program and then training camp and then you have to go play the season. I think you're going to have to incorporate some of the skill set of what they did in college to what you're doing in the pros. So I think as as it goes forward, you're going to see more and more of that. Last one here. I can't hear you, Aaron. I'm sorry. Oh, I think we're a long way away from that. I think he is. I think he's working very, very hard. Like you know, everybody would know know that about him. I mean, he's, he's not going to be denied, uh, you know, being ready to play next year. But as far as OTAs go and things Pittsburgh like that, wide we, haven't, receiver, Tyler we haven't even discussed that yet. So, Pittsburgh wide receiver, uh, Tyler I think Boyd, we're a long way away from deciding whether it'll be an OTA and some of those different things. Which players are you looking for offensive line? Which type of players are you looking to move your offensive line? We, the thing about the offensive line I think that's important for us is we need guys, number one, that are tough, that are smart, good communicators, athletic guys, guys that can pull, uh, guys that can uh, run block and pass set, they're pass protect, they're not just one dimensional players, versatile players, you know, guys that can play guard and tackle, guard and center, tackle and tight end. So it's hard to find those guys, you know, and that's what we're trying to do, uh, one of the things we're trying to do in this process. Thank you.